When you first log into the Story Creator module, this is the screen that you'll see. This white square here represents the PowerPoint slide, and you can see that very similar to the PowerPoint interface, that when I choose this object, you can see that I have the ability to choose what should actually populate here. So we can work with charts, we can work with tables, and we can work with text boxes. So just to start off, I'll choose chart. Now I have a chart occupying this space. And the first thing that I'll do is choose which variables should populate this chart. So I go to my questions tab here. I'll choose a variable, choose some answers, and when I click calculate, I have a simple bar chart automatically load. Now below our questions tab, we have the ability to change the chart type. These are all of the supported chart types within this story creator module. But you can see when I click into each of these, I have the ability to look at more detailed options. If I keep this simple, I'll look at a column chart, everything updates. Now we have our toolbar here. So we called out our most commonly used settings when creating charts and tables and made sure that they were easily accessible. So within one click, you can add data values. You can increase the number of decimal places. You can choose to include base size information. Additionally, you can change font size, font colors, all within one click. Additionally, we have the options to access more settings through these dropdowns. So first off, we have the format chart dropdown which provides all of the settings in terms of stylization and customizing the look and feel of this chart. So if you want to add data values again, or if you want to change the placement of your legend, or just simply change the colors here, that's all done within our format chart dropdown. We also have our series settings dropdown, and this is really more of your data-driven options. So any kind of base size suppression rules, or just different sorting rules, I can open up sorting, and maybe I want to look at this by value descending, you can see with each click, this chart automatically updates. Now from here, you can see that I'm just currently looking at a standard percent share calculation, but I can apply an additional analysis on top of this. So if I go to my apply analysis dropdown, you can see that I have the ability to add benchmark, significance testing, mean value series. So for this example, if I just enable benchmarking, fill out the necessary fields for this calculation and recalculate, I now see this chart update with my percent share calculation alongside that benchmarking result. Now you can see that I've just been working with one slide and one object. However, we have a lot more flexibility in terms of the layouts of our slides. So if I go to add a new slide to this deck, I can see all of the supported layouts that the system allows. So if I want to look at three objects with a header, I can see that I now have two slides in my deck, this second one offering the ability to add three different objects. So I also have the ability to add a title here, so I can double click, edit the text, this is all formatted uh, within the system, so you can change the colors, you can change the font sizes, the fonts, um, and you can even include bulleted lists. So now if I want to add a table, it's the same process where now instead of choosing chart, I'll choose table. And along the top here, I'm no longer looking at chart types. I'm looking at different stylized table options. So following the same kind of process, I can choose a variable, or maybe I'll choose a couple of variables and a couple answers. I'll calculate my result. And I can see that I have a table populate automatically. So I can click through all of my table stylizations here, but you can format it further within the format table dropdown. So if I want to change the cell color, for example, I can do that within the format table dropdown. Also within the system, we support just standard copy and paste functionality. So I can copy this, paste it in my next object down, and all of my variables and formatting settings carry over. Additionally, you can filter these objects by navigating to the filters and splits tab, and I can choose the filter option. So maybe I want to filter this table by females. I'm now prompted to recalculate I see that same table here, this text informing me that I'm filtering by female and all of the data updates as well. Now the last option that we have in terms of objects to populate are text boxes. So we've gone through charts, we've gone through tables. If I choose a text box icon, this just brings me to a standard text box. So this is great for any kind of additional analysis that needs to be included on a slide.
So now that you've created a couple of slides, you can save these. So if I navigate over to the left side of my screen where this panel is, you can see I have a save as option. I just give this deck a name, click save. That means the next time I log into this project, I can just navigate again over to the left and click open and choose which deck I want to load. So when a new wave of data is imported to the project, your decks automatically update with data, meaning you can just log in, open your favorite deck, and see all of the results with your updated data included. Now we also have the option to export our decks. So if I go to my export options, I'm brought to my export window where I can see all of my options for export formats. Now a common question that we get is, what are the PowerPoint export formats? And we have a little bit of flexibility here. So you have the option to export to PowerPoint where all of your charts and tables export as images, meaning you can't actually edit the data or format the charts differently in PowerPoint. We also have the option to generate a PowerPoint report with editable objects, meaning someone can add additional formatting to a chart in PowerPoint, or someone can go in and edit the data behind a chart or table in PowerPoint as well. You can turn off any of these options, so if you don't want someone to be able to edit anything further in PowerPoint, you can turn off the option to generate PowerPoint report as editable objects. For this demo though, I'll, ed I'll generate an editable PowerPoint. I click this option, I can see that this is now running a generation and I'll be notified when complete. So I can see that this generation is now complete. So I'll open this up in PowerPoint. And now I can see my deck available in PowerPoint. As I mentioned, since I exported this as editable PowerPoint, not only can I format this chart further, but I can also actually edit the data behind the chart. So I right click, edit data in Excel, and maybe I want to change the score for Dapercy Telecom to 75. You can see that this chart automatically updates and rescales.